who just joined in at Stanford with a win. But uh, coach, uh, you, you got down in that second quarter, but uh, there's fight in this team. And I know you're proud of your kids tonight. I am, I'm really proud. Um, you know, we're disappointed. We don't believe in moral victories. Uh, we, uh, we wanted to win that, this game. We played hard enough and well enough to win the game and we didn't. And, um, you know, so I know we're disappointed, but at the same time, I'm proud of the team and the fight we showed. I thought we, for the first time against one of these elite teams, um, we played well, you know, we played hard for four quarters and, uh, it just didn't, uh, didn't go our way. I thought we had a couple pretty good looks late and it just didn't go our way. The three ball, it returned tonight, 10 of 21, almost 48%. Got to be happy with that. Yeah, it's uh, been MIA in February, part of January. So, yes, it was good to have that back. Um, uh, but even more importantly, I, you know, I thought we executed well to get those shots. Uh, we didn't take bad shots from the three, and I thought that was a, uh, a big plus tonight. Taylor Mikesell hitting a couple of threes, uh, Tahina Pow Pow as well. Uh, especially uh, uh, Taylor been struggling a little bit with the shot. Jazz Shelley as well uh, with a couple of threes. So the, uh, some kids showed up tonight, and it's got to feel good as you get, you know, disappointment, but feels good going to UCLA on Friday. Uh, it does, yeah. And there you go. You just said it. We got to go to UCLA, another or third straight top 10 opponent. Um, you know, it, it, listen, we're right there. We're, we're right there. I, you know, you could look at three of those five losses that we've had. Uh, the two Arizona games were the anomalies. And, um, you know, we had opportunities in all three of those games, just a little play here, a little play there. And, um, you know, and we're learning from it. But I, I told the kids tonight in the locker room, the benefit of playing in the Pac-12, one of the benefits, is that this prepares us for, I mean, we're not going to see, you know, Stanford's a legitimate championship game contender. They, they, they really are. And uh, so we're used to playing that kind of team so that when we do get in the NCAA tournament, we've seen everything, we've played against the best, and hopefully we learn from it. All right, Coach. Uh, I wanted to say congratulations for a win, but certainly congratulations for the effort. And uh, that kind of effort is going to take this team a long way. So thanks for the visit. Thank you. All right, we're going to start with Eric Stopel, 247 Sports. Coach, you had the luxury of setting up two plays out of timeout there late to try to tie or win did you I guess what were you looking to draw up there and, and did you get the looks you were hoping for obviously with Tahina tripping that's kind of a bad luck thing but did you did the ball go where it was supposed to go on those two yeah we had a couple of uh looks it, it wasn't for Tahina to make the play to score uh we felt by the way they were defending that thing we were going to be able to get a, a switch and a matchup that we wanted down low it didn't work plus we had a, a you know our best shooter on that weak side so um, you know, it's just unfortunate. That's the way the ball ball bounces. I thought uh, the possession before T Mike's three, that's a, you know, and she was having a good night. That was a really good look for us. Um, again, we had our opportunities. I, I'm more concerned about what we gave them up, uh, what we gave up at the other end. It, it, I don't think it was the offense. We could have done a little bit better uh, offensively late, but I thought defensively we, we, um, we gave them too many easy shots. James Kirby of the Oregonian. Kelly, what is the message to uh, the, those three shooters in particular? Because Jazz, uh, Taylor, Tahina, uh, they do have good nights and they do make threes when they have been struggling. Yet, as you mentioned, obviously down the stretch, they come up with misses. There's got to be, on one hand, feeling good that they had a better night than they have the last several weeks. On the other hand, down the stretch, you know, to come up with the misses. What, what's the message of the three individuals? Yeah, well, if they hadn't hit the early ones, it wouldn't have come down to one shot now, would it? I, I mean, you know, that, that happens. Michael Jordan uh, missed a hell of a lot of shots late to win games. So, you know, uh, yeah, I'd prefer him to make them. I thought we got good shots. That all, that's all I can concern myself with is did we get a good shot? And I thought for the most part, we got a couple of pretty good shots. I thought Jazz's was, was pretty good there late too. But that doesn't say anything about a kid's character or uh, their willingness to take the big shot. So. Andrew Hobner, KEZI. Kelly, there was there was a moment there in the third. Speaking of, of three point shooting, I think it was you know Taylor hit a three, and your bench just went absolutely crazy. I mean, has it felt like or did it feel like in this one when the shots started falling that that there was almost a, a sense of relief coming from some of your players that you know finally after all this time the shots were going down and the confidence was rising? Yeah, I think so. 
You guys, it's it's been a struggle. I mean, it really has. And offensively, we just, you know, we haven't been on point. We haven't been shooting it well. We got a lot of reasons. We're not making excuses. We're a young team. We're playing a really good uh, portion of our schedule. Uh, we have no fans. You tell me that in a game like this, in the UCLA game, one possession games, that 12,367 people in the kennel wouldn't have made a freaking difference. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, and so we, we don't have a lot going for us. And so, yes, it was, I was happy to see, I think they know the struggles, uh, you know, they they come with a good attitude every day at practice and we work hard and it hasn't showed up a lot against our really good uh, opponents. You know, we're beating the teams that we should, and now we need to start beating some of these teams that are ahead of us in the standings. But if we play this hard and, and this focused, you know, we're going to be able to do that at some point. And that, you know, could be in March. Ryan Thoburn, Red Cigar. Kelly, you guys uh, were down by, I think, 15 points in this game. Uh, what does that come back against a team of this caliber kind of, does that bode well for you guys going forward? Do you think you can build off that? I do. I do. This should springboard us. We would have felt a lot better with a win, but we should still feel better about our performance. Uh, even in this loss. Like I said, this is a team that could win a national championship and we went toe to toe with them right there. And we had an opportunity here and there. So I'm not going to sit there and slam the team or anything. This I'm really proud of them. I'm really proud of them, man. We played hard tonight. They gave it everything that they had. And, uh, and so we're going to use this as a springboard. I put on the board tonight, our drive to March. We truly feel like we can be a player come March. This is the kind of game, even in a loss, that will help us. But make no mistake, Ryan, we do not believe in moral victories. We wanted to win a game. We're disappointed that we didn't win the game. And so I'm not going to just sit here and say we're happy because we played close. Uh, back to Eric. Try to go two for one, Kelly. First, just uh, you guys switch up the starting lineup again. Is it, Are you comfortable with that? Was that a matchup thing? And then Taylor Chavez kind of, her availability being for, for Friday. I don't know. I'm hoping we're hoping she's in the middle of that pro uh, that uh, COVID progression. You know, they got to get a little bit better. We're hoping by Friday that we have her. I think she'd really help. Um, I, I liked, uh, you know, I just like the way Sydney's been playing in, in practice and, and uh, we wanted to get T Mike. Listen, we need Taylor. We need her. If we're, if we're going to make a run in this thing, we need to have Taylor be that sniper that I know she's capable of being. So I just thought that, uh, you know, by reinserting her here, here um, I, I just thought it was the right time. And uh, I think that paid off tonight. So uh, hopefully she uses this as a real positive and springboards to a, a really great finish. Doug Fiber, AB, AP. Hey, Coach, good to see you. I, you I, too. You were playing as this was going out, but they announced the 16 reveal. You guys are 11th. I know there's a lot of basketball left to be played. Is this one of these years it doesn't really matter in a sense because there's no home courts, so you're playing three, four, five, whoever it is. Like meaningless, absolutely meaningless. Yeah, it doesn't. And actually, I think 11 is. Uh, who does that put you with? A, uh, a seven, a six, six, yeah. 11. And that's a three. So you, you're avoiding a one or a two. I mean, I know there's a lot left to play, but uh, no, I feel good about that. I, I think this team has proven that we're among the better teams in the country. We're still a work in progress, man. We're still growing. You saw a lot of freshmen play minutes out there tonight. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. But I did not know that, Doug. Thank you. 11. AJ McCord, coin. Coach, you mentioned using this loss tonight as a springboard. How do you make sure that you harness the emotions that come with this loss into a positive way heading into another brutal matchup against UCLA with such a young team? These are harder to take, AJ, than the beating we took last Monday against Arizona. Okay? Um, because you think one play here, one play there. But the locker room after this loss was entirely different. There weren't as many maybe finger pointings or people just doubting themselves or, you know, what happens in a normal course of a season. Uh, tonight, I think, uh, even though there were a lot of disappointed kids in there because we knew we had a, we missed an opportunity, but I think we felt better about our performance and about where we're at. So um, 
hopefully we use that tomorrow's a day off. We'll come back Wednesday and hit it hard. Wednesday's our hard day before we really uh, tackle uh, UCLA on, on Friday. So we'll, we'll see if this helped by our performance this weekend against the LA schools. Uh, time for a couple more here, coach. Uh, back to Andrew Hopner. By the way, AJ, we miss you. You need to show up more on these, okay? I know you're busy up there, but don't forget the little guys. Far from little. I got a few of you guys on my calendar coming down. Okay. Uh, Kelly, looking at looking at this Stanford team, you know, Haley Jones last year, you know, blowing her knee out, changed the complexion of them. But, I mean, just – how much different are they this year from last year and, and the depth that they're able to have, especially in the front court and the rotations they can throw at you? Yeah, well, the thing that makes them tough is, number one, they're pretty well coached, right? They don't beat themselves, even though we turned them over 18 times tonight and 17 times last game. I thought we did a good job. I thought we had a good plan tonight and executed it. But, Andrew, what they do and why they pose so many problems is they have every player on that team can play. They can play multiple positions. Uh, they can all shoot it. They can all make plays. So they're just hard to guard. You have to be on point when you play Stanford. And if you, uh, you know, just make a wrong decision defensively, they make you pay because they're so good. They've been running that Princeton stuff since, uh, since you were born, Andrew. And so they're just really good at it. They know every read. They know every counter. And so you have to be on point. And I thought we defended it pretty well. We lost them a couple times late, you know, went under a screen on Keanu Williams and you can't do that late. Uh, and they made us pay. And then that three in the corner was big that one of the holes, I get confused. They look alike, but one of them hit it. And that was a big shot for them. Last question, Rob Mosley, go Ducks. KG, you're talking about the mood in the locker room post game. What about at halftime and how, how key was that little run at the end of the first half? setting the stage for playing better in the second half. I thought it was great. It was a positive locker room at halftime, and we really focused on winning the third quarter, and we did, because in our game at Stanford, we lost the third quarter. The two games at Arizona State, or Arizona, I should say, we lost the third quarter. Those were key quarters. So we really focused on putting four quarters together tonight and, and uh, really talked about making this third quarter. Let's win the third quarter, and we did. We're making progress, man. We're making progress. It, hey, just it goes to show you, we have a, we have five losses and we were the eleventh in the in the reveal. That shows not only um, respect for our program, but certainly respect for the Pac-12. No question about that. All right, thank you very much, Coach. See you guys. I'll be in LA this week if you need me. Okay. <laughs>